So um, I'm unboxing the Google TV Streamer 4K. This is the Pearl version. I bought it on Amazon. I was looking for a solution to be able to connect a USB stick to my Sky Glass TV. And one of the options was to get a Google Streamer like this. And what I'm going to do is combine it with a USB-C hub. I was kind of curious as to see what was in this package. So so these are the components that come with the Google TV Streamer 4K. Um, there's a little warranty document. There's also a quick start guide. The quick start guide explains how you plug your Google TV streamer device into a power socket and into the HDMI port on your TV. It explains the remote and the use of the various buttons on the remote as well. But essentially this is the little streaming device. There's a power button, a USB-C power connector. There also seems to be an Ethernet port or LAN uh, connector there and your HDMI connector. There's a USB charge cord that connects in this case to a standard UK 3-pin plug um, and that's what powers the device. The pack comes with two batteries for the remote. Uh, these look like AAA batteries. So you open the remote just by sliding down the cover and you put the batteries in like that and then just put the cover back in place. However, as I explained, um, I bought the Google Streamer for a specific purpose um, and so what I got from Amazon was a Ugreen USB-C hub as well. This is an 181 hub available from Amazon. This allows me to connect the hub to the streaming device um, and that'll allow me then to use any USB memory cards or USB sticks that I want to, to access content on them. What that means though is that I will be using the Google Streamer power cord and wall plug to actually provide power to the Ugreen USB-C hub. Um, and then this will give the power to the streaming device. So this is the Ugreen um, Riverdock 18 USB USB-C hub. Uh, this is for 4K or 60 Hertz. Um, and this is part of the solution I'm gonna have, um, as I said, to being able to use a memory stick or SD card reader uh, through the Google Streamer for my TV. The USB hub comes with a user instruction sheet and like a quick start guide telling you what all the different ports are for and how it operates. Then this is the Ugreen USB hub itself. It's quite great. You've got your USB-C power supply there, an HDMI port. You've got your SD, micro SD card reader, a standard SD card reader, the two USB-A connectors, and another two USB-C connectors. This is the one with the power pass through, which I am going to use to power the Google streamer. I also on Amazon got a Ugreen HDMI cord. This one is good for resolutions up to 8K, obviously, uh, and that'll connect the Google TV streamer to my uh, television. It's quite a good sturdy braided cable, two meters in length, and should be enough uh, for the job. So what I'm next gonna do now is go and plug this all in um, to a wall socket, add the USB-C hub, and connect it to my Sky Glass TV uh, and see how that works. I have to say, I quite like these little plastic clips that came with the USB power cord um, because rather than having little wire ties, these little clips can clip or unclip and it's a great way of 
being able to keep your cords tidy if you want to. So I'm actually going to hang on to these because I think they'll come in handy uh, for some other cords that I've got. Okay, so firstly what I'm going to do is I'm just going to plug the Google TV streamer power adapter into my wall plug. Then the USB-C power goes into this power delivery port on the USB-C hub. And that in turn plugs into the USB-C connector for the Google TV streamer. So I'm going to just put that there for now um, while I'm testing this out. And then I'll see how I position these devices to make sure that they're out of sight and out of mind. I also need to connect an HDMI cord from the Google TV streamer to my Sky Glass TV. The one end of the HDMI cord goes into the HDMI port in the TV, like that. And the other side of the HDMI cord goes into the Google streamer, like that. So as I said, the cords are visible at the moment, but I'll work out a solution that keeps them out of sight. So what I'm going to do now is turn on the Sky Glass TV and then switch on the Google streaming device. And that seems to have already appeared on my TV now. So it says press and hold the back arrow and the home key. So let's do that. Ah, and there we've paired. So now we've got a couple of options to go through. We can choose our language and go with English right now. And we're going to go with the United Kingdom. And now we have to set up with the Google Home app. Download the Google Home app on the phone or tablet to get started. So that's what I'm going to do on my phone. And now it's busy installing Google apps for Android TV. So it looks like the Google TV streamer is adding some finishing touches now. There's optional features you can set up. I definitely want to use my Google Photos as a screensaver. No albums found. Uh, that's probably because I haven't created any albums, but I can go and do that in Google Photos and add some albums. Let me see if I can do that here on here. So if I go into Google Photos, can I create a new album? Ah, see, then I can create an album. I can give it a title. I can say family photos, add some photos in there from um, Google Photos, and that album will then be used on the screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just say, let's add something in there. I'll say I'll add some family photos there. And then what you can do is you can select some photos for that. So I'll just go through and you know, there's a couple there from the parents and us and maybe one of me and the wife. And we can go through and see. Ah, there's one there and there. Let's see. Okay, so if we add those. Alrighty. So now we've got an album. But let's see now if we try again. That should be able to, well, there we go, family albums. If we select it now, that should be able to update the screensaver. And so there we go. And we're in. There's apps. So all of the stuff is there. We've got the iPlayer, we've got Netflix, Prime Video, Disney Plus, YouTube, Paramount, they're all there. Probably have to sign into each of them as I go. But what I want to see is apps because I want to see if we have a way to play. Ah, VLC for Android. So this is a micro SD card I've got with some videos on it. Plug that into the USB hub. And now I should be able to go to the file manager. 
and it'll install the file manager for me. There we go. So let's open it. So now we can go to external storage. We're allowed to access that. Next. I've got to consent to things. So great. Now we can see our main storage on the streamer itself. There's my SD card. So if we go into that, I should be able to go to some of the items that I have in here. Um, and for example, let's say we want to go and watch Outlander number 14. Previously, I find you to be the most singular woman, Craig. Jamie's wife. And I must say, I am pretty impressed. So that's working exactly how I wanted it. It means I can now play my own videos and content through the Google streamer and onto my Sky Glass TV, which is brilliant. Oh, and I almost forgot to access the uh, screensaver with your photographs now. From the home screen on the Google TV streamer, you can go across to the gear icon, go down to system, whack the right arrow, ambient screensaver, and go start now. And then let's see what it does. And there's some photos from my Google Photos album showing on the Skyglass TV. When these photos are showing, you can then use your right arrow again to scroll through the photos. To come out of it, you just back arrow or up. The other important part of the Google TV streamer is obviously it acts as a device which you can cast to. And if you're like me and you've got an Android phone, you love to be able to cast stuff to your TV. The fact that I couldn't do that to the Skyglass TV was driving me insane, but now I can. So I'm gonna go into one of these photographs on my phone. And what we should be able to do is cast from my Samsung phone. I should be able to cast it to the family room TV. And if I do that, it should go to the Google TV streamer. And voila, we are now casting to the TV. And this is just fantastic because not being able to do that on the Skyglass was driving me insane. And then the last thing I did was just set up the Google TV streamer so that the cables are not visible and hidden behind the Skyglass TV. But that makes it look like it's part of the setup. And I'm glad I got the same color as the Skyglass TV.